flex box. Having family here, I was also traveling a lot this week. Monday, today was quite productive. Checking uh, if I can use Flexbox, uh, one of the sources that it's uh, really worth recommending is Can I Use? Uh, I always come back to this page when I want to check uh, if uh, it, you know, the feature is already supported. And there are always uh, known issues mentioned, uh, and uh, you see which versions are supported to which extent, where, where there are some problems like partial support due to a large amount of bugs, or Mm, only supporting a given syntax and uh, what's great also about this page can I use uh, dot com is uh, that you also have uh, resources suggested and here you can find a lot of useful links one of the links that I found here um, just by you know searching the page uh, was this one which is the git repo about known flex bugs um, this is this one. It's a it's a Git repository about uh, Flexbox issues and cross browsers uh, workarounds uh, for them. Another very useful uh, resource, and generally the page that I use very often, the CSS uh, tricks and uh, CSS tricks um, dot com. And on this page, there's a complete guide to Flexbox. It's got a lot of uh, images that can help you to get how it works. We have also info about prefixing Flexbox because, uh, uh, you know, because of this uh, limited browser support, still you have to use uh, auto prefixer. Very often from the comments here in this uh, page in CSS tricks, you can learn a lot. It's like a second, uh, second pack of information uh, additional to, to the main article. <laughs> how various this land and this you know world is so you have the um, juxtaposition of uh, something that is uh, really expensive with something that is uh, really cheap and with people who who don't have money to live coding nowadays it can be learned for free that's why I love initiatives such as open source because everybody can use it, it's for free, so what you need to pay attention to and what you need to pay with is your, your time. In majority of other branches, in order to learn something new, you have to pay. Coding is a bit different, so to learn coding or to learn design, sure, you can go to the school, you can go to the university, you can pay for the courses, you can pay for boot camps, for tutorials, and uh, I also use partially these uh, sources, but there are um, tons, there are tons of free materials. So saying that you don't have money and you want to learn to code is not an excuse. What you need to invest is your time and your willingness to learn and being consistent and you know coming back to code, coming back to new tutorials, looking for the sources, reading a lot, watching, uh, subscribing, being you know inquisitive. And being simply curious when you see a great blog post, look what else do they write. When you bump into a great tutorial, look what others, you know, series they have on their YouTube channel. So simply start doing. Lack of money is not an excuse. Money helps, but you don't have to have it to study. You don't have to have 
extra money to pay for the courses. Sure, you have to have the money to survive and to eat, etc. But in order to learn, uh, there, are, there are a lot of open source projects which, which are for free. And there are a lot of groups uh, in code community that you can really use if you want to learn coding. You can also go to the local meetups. You can also visit local groups devoted to the given language. You can uh, visit various forums. You can uh, learn from YouTube tutorials, from blogs, from medium articles. When I started learning to code, I discovered that a majority of uh, paid resources have trials. And before deciding on any paid course, you know the, the service, you know if it's really worth. But also, if uh, you don't have enough money to pay for it, this tutorial that they give can also give you the basic knowledge that you need. If you use these trials that are free uh, from each service, still you gain a lot of free materials. So learning to code, you don't need to spend a fortune. Good day, it's Wednesday and my article about my first path that I took to le while learning to code has been just published. It already has 150 uh, upvotes and 9 comments, so it means that on average more than 10 people like this uh, article per hour. I will provide the link to this article uh, below in the video description, so if you are interested have a look there. As I told you, you can really learn for free. Recently I bumped into Flexbox.io uh, on Gitter, so if you have eyes open, there are really a lot, a lot of you know, free resources that are really of a great quality. You have to have just only your eyes open and, uh, and look around what's possible and remember that Google is your friend. Trying to do the first step with Flexbox, I will start with navigation. This is the final version of my navigation that I was working on in Flexbox. It's like the example to have a bit of practice with Flexbox navigation. It's pretty responsive. It changes uh, according to the width of the viewport. I just implemented the pricing list with Flexbox. It's just the desktop view right now, but this pricing list is built uh, with Flexbox and with SAS. It's one of my first uh, snippets of code in SAS, and because of being uh, used to uh, regular CSS, uh, your hand goes to semicolons and brackets. In Codepell, you can do the compiled version, so you can do uncompiled CSS and compiled CSS. In order to compare, uh, you know, checking if everything is uh, compiled correctly later, especially if you try CSS for the first time. And I also used uh, Flexbox here for this pricing list, uh, it looks like that. that I've implemented with using Flexbox and SAS is this uh, single line booking form uh, where you can choose a uh, number of rooms, date, and uh, how many people will book the room. It's like, you know, simple code snippet, uh, simple code snippet that, that uh, may be used for booking the rooms, uh, the, like conference rooms in a company or something similar. I'm using SAS here some um, simple wrapping in media queries and um, 
also I'm using Flexbox. Let's revise Flexbox. I got a box here and I will try to uh, revise what I learned with it using this box. Imagine this is the container. This is the div that's got a display flex. This is the div. Having the display flex, we treat it as a parent. This is flex row. When you change it to flex column, so when you go to direction column, they will be squeezed this way. By default, they do not wrap. By default, the elements do not the elements do not wrap. So imagine we have more of the elements. The simplest option is to say wrap, and these two extra elements then would be wrapped by default to the next line. The default order is zero. So whenever we change the order of an item, so uh, whenever, for example, this item number one. Uh, will change the order to 1 and by default all of them right now have 0 it will move here right now it's 0, 0, 1 so setting it to minus 1 we move it to the beginning it's pretty useful for um, responsive layouts for example when we talk about having the, the order different on mobile and different on desktop three elements and they will be justified center they will be simply in the center when we talk about justify content we can also go to flex start and flex end by flex start it means that all of the items will be moved to flex start it's flex direction row so flex start it's here another justify content is flex end as a result, all of the items uh, will go to flex end because this is uh, flex direction row and this is the end. It's good to remember uh, when you get lost where is the main axis. So when it's a row, it's this way, so it's a horizontal line. And when it's the column, uh, when it comes to flex direction, it's from top to bottom. Have a look at the description of this video below because you will find there a lot of useful links in order to learn and practice Flexbox. It's Friday evening and this week this article was also a huge source of motivation for me. Thanks to Christian, it's also available right now in Chinese, you will find the version under this link. I got a lot of feedback connected with the article that I wrote. And being able to hear so many voices on um, my path so far and what could be done differently and uh, what's inspiring for them. It was something that made my week. This week I've also gathered 12 brownie points for helping other people on Gitter. And uh, I got a currently 477 brownie points. So I'm missing 23 uh, to my 500 points challenge uh, in order to start next uh, level in Free Code Camp. One of the biggest problems that I met this week was uh, nesting in Flexbox uh, because uh, going into uh, levels of nesting um, sometimes can can get tricky and uh, you have to be really careful with that. Next week I want to work more with Flexbox and SAS, so I want to do some more UI elements uh, using them. Uh, and I want to also rediscover this grid system because uh, Flexbox, uh, as, as I read, is like pretty well for smaller components but not necessarily for you know huge uh, app layout. And it seems to be pretty fun later to build uh, the app uh, just using Flexbox and grid system and not ready framework because it's like another level for me. Keep on doing, stay motivated and see you next week.